Now let's talk a little bit about Israel because I know that that is something we all care about. Shomer Yisrael is one of the most important things I do to watch be the guardian of Israel. First and foremost, Barack Obama has been a supporter and a believer in Israel from before he was in the Senate. You can look it up and see the record. And you know who got him started in politics? Not in the presidential. That's everyone, as I said, says the right thing. But before that, it was the two leading Jewish families of, of, of Chicago. But most people don't know enough about him. So I wanted to come here and tell you this. You, as my lanceman, many as my former constituents, I came down here because I really believe in him, and I could not, I could not bring myself constitutionally to work hard for him if I wasn't certain that he was, that he understood Israel and was a devout supporter, and his record unblemished. Usually you can find something. They did this, they did that. When it comes to support of Israel, 100% APAC voting record long before he decided to be president. But let me give you two points where McCain and Palin's probably worse. Hurts Israel. It's a three-letter word. Who knows it? Oil. As long as we maintain our dependence on oil and foreign oil, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait will have far too much power, and that's bad for Israel. And who wants to maintain our dependence on oil? John McCain and Sarah Palin. Their view is drill and drill and drill. And even if we find more oil, it's not close to enough. We're going to continue to import it. Ladies and gentlemen, the way to take the hammer rock that's around Israel's neck off is for the United States to no longer need oil and Europe to no longer need oil. And then Saudi Arabia is just a desert instead of a desert on top of a lot of oil. Barack Obama says, I'll drill in the short run in certain places. But, uh-uh, over the next 10 years, we're going to become totally independent of oil. We're going to have electric cars. We're going to have wind and solar and biomass. And by the way, to show you he's not some crazy left-wing liberal, he also believes in nuclear, which most of us think we should look at and try under the right safeguards. So you know what I would argue to you? On the issue of Israel itself, they're both good. They're about equal. They have the same good voting record, same APAC 100%. But when you add in the added dimension of oil and the added dimension of Iran, Obama trumps McCain on the Middle East alone by a lot. And then, of course, there's all the domestic issues, education, which we talked about. Our health care system, you know this. Energy prices. Everything. Everything has gone down the drain. And so our country needs change. John McCain is proud to say when he was running in the Republican primary, votes with Bush 92% of the time. Sarah Palin, if anything, is to the right of Bush. What we know of her. To the right, I'm serious. Change? No. Another four years of this, and I'm not sure we'll recover. John McCain and the Republicans know they can't win on domestic policy. That's easy, that's a layup. They also realize that foreign policy is no longer their strong suit. So here is what they're doing. They're trying to scare you. And they're trying to scare the Jewish community, and particularly elderly in the Jewish community, with the nasty innuendos. Oh, did you hear? He's a Muslim. Did you hear? He believes in the Koran, or he swore on the Koran. Did you hear? He's got this minister. On his minister? Well, you know, my rabbi in my reformed synagogue in Brooklyn on one Rosh Hashanah denounced the Orthodox. He thought they were reaching too far. I didn't like that, edit, uh, that uh, sermon, particularly on Rosh Hashanah. I didn't quit my temple. And no one said that's what Chuck Schumer believes. Well, Obama 
when this minister in the last four years went off the deep end and he was mostly in Washington, he quit his church and denounced the guy. And you know what? When you're sitting around playing cards or mahjong or you're at the swimming pool, there'll be one person who'll be loud in saying this out of 10. But everyone else is sort of quiet. We're the silent majority. And you say to yourself, this is part of our ethnic genetic heritage, well, maybe it's true, when you know it isn't. Well, I'm asking you to do something here, which will multiply the, this large crowd tenfold. I'm asking you to have the principle and courage and honor and decency say, that is not true. You have the ability to affect our history. First, by voting, and second, by spreading the word, by rebutting these nasty, false innuendos that have all too often in our country and other countries had the day. And if you can do that, you'll affect history. As the rabbi would say, you'll do a mitzvah. But most importantly, you will be helping your children, yourselves, your grandchildren, and our country to a better future. Thank you very much, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, from 2008. And let South Florida carry the day.